All right, welcome to January's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is smallest string with a given numeric value. A numeric value of a lowercase character is defined as its position in the alphabet. So A is 1, B is 2, so on and so forth. A numeric value of a string consists of lowercase characters defined as the sum of its character's numeric values. So ABE is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 5 equals 8. Now you're given two integers, N, which is the length of the string, and K, which is the sum of of the character numeric values. Uh, we want to return the lexicographically smallest string with length equal to n and numeric value equal to k. Note that a string x is lexicographically smaller than y if x comes before y in dictionary order. So in other words, we want the um, smallest st uh, string in lexicographically sorted order with a sum of the k given to us and a length of n. Okay, so a couple insights here. We have a length, right? So at the very least, we have to have a value that's gonna be equal to the length of the string. So if we consist all of these as a's, that's gonna sum of a total of three, and that's gonna be the minimum number that we could actually return. Now, they're given to us uh, number k, so, if you think about it carefully, uh, we want to basically increase the last character to its max value and continue on until we fulfill our k. So with this example here, we can start with like AAA, see whatever's left, update the last character to uh, the max number that we can, which is Z, that's going to be 26. And if there's anything left after that, we'll move on to the next index and continue this algorithm until we have a total sum of k. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let's think about our approach. The first thing I want to do is create some sort of lookup dictionary with the numeric value as the key and the character as its index. That way I don't need to worry too much about having to convert it constantly. And what we'll do is have a list comprehension. We are going to go from the index to the character in uh, enumerate what I'll do is say range of, uh, I'm going to use the ORD function and say A to the ORD of Z. And I need to add one here as well. So I'm going to create this dictionary with a value of I. And I want to reconvert this into a character. So this uh, CHR of character. So let's make sure this looks right. And looks like it works. Uh, notice how I made the zero a a and one a b. And the reason I did it this way is we're gonna start off with everything being a one, right? So the difference isn't actually gonna be the character that we want. It's gonna be like if we have 25 left over, then we want to update it to a Z, right? So we want we don't want this exactly as 26. We want it to be the difference from one. Uh, that way it's gonna make it a little bit easier when we do our calculations. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a temp list. And I'm gonna have just all values of zero at first for let's say whatever in the range of the N given to us. So now we have this temp string, it's all zeros, and that to us means it's all A's, right? <clears throat> so I wanna start by initializing like the index character from the very end, and this will just be the length of temp minus one. And we wanna keep track of whatever's left over. So whatever's left over is gonna be K minus the uh, length of temp. Right. Okay, so while we have something left over, so left is greater than zero, and just to make sure, let's say, all right, end is also greater or equal to zero because we don't want to fall out of the index. Uh, what are we going to check? Well, we're at the very end here with AAA, let's say, and we're going to first see if um, whatever's left over is greater than 25. Because if it's greater than 25, then it has to be a Z, right? So if left is greater than 25, what do we want to do? We're going to take our temps list, 
and make that equal to, uh, well, 25. After that, I suppose we can just set left to zero and just end the algorithm. Otherwise, if it's greater, or if it's not greater, then that means whatever this character is should be the temp here with whatever is left, right? And I apologize, this shouldn't be left equals zero. This should be left uh, subtracted by 25. Because if it's a Z, then we want to carry over whatever's left to the next character or the previous character and just keep continuing on. Uh, here, if we find that uh, it's less than 25, then that's the last amount. So this character is going to be something between A to Z. And uh, just to continue our algorithm, make sure to decrease our end by 1. And that would be it. So after this, we just need to return the string version of it, right? Because right now it's a list of numbers. So what we'll do is say for hmm, uh, let's see i in temp for i in temp, I suppose we're going to look up the character that's going to return to us a string and we all do a string join to make it into one single string here. All right, so that looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and check. And that is accepted. Time complexity, it's O of N, right? Because we are only going to do as many as the length allows. And we have to have this look up, so that's actually going to be a space complexity of O of N as well. Now, can we do better? Like, this is fine. This works. Um, but is there a way that we can actually even do better than this? If you think about it carefully, um, we know the minimum string is going to be all A's and the maximum string is going to be all Z's, right? There's nothing less or greater than that. If you think about it character, care, uh, carefully, this algorithm, basically what this means is it's going to consist of some number of A's in the beginning, some number of Z's at the end, and one character of something else in the middle. Uh, it could be all A's, it could be all Z's, but if there is something other than an A or Z, it's only going to be one of them. It's going to be in between th these A's and Z's. So that's a big insight, uh, and this algorithm kind of shows you why that would be the case. Could we figure out a way to calculate that number and then just generate our string with the number of A's and Z's at the end, as well as the character that we want to look at? Okay, so that's, um, that's possible. If we did that, we don't need any of this. What we can do is say, okay, first take our K and we will subtract the number of n's, and this is going to be basically what's up, whatever is left over, right? Now let's calculate the number of z's. What's going to be the number of z's? Well, that's going to be basically the number that we have left over divided by 25, right? Because if we have some number greater, like 100, the number of z's that we can take care of that with is going to be divided by 25 there. And we'll have something left over, and that's if we have something left over, that's going to be the weird character. So to get the number of A's here, we just take our number of Z's, uh, subtract that from the uh, N, and I think we'll actually have to subtract one just in case we have a number in the middle. So what we're going to do is take our number of A's, add that to, well, before we get to that, let's get to the number of Z's as well. Oops. And here, in the middle, we want to take, um, well, I, I guess we can use the character, uh, get the ORD of um, A, and we'll add the modular from K, modular 25 here. This will give us the ORD, and we will add however many numbers that we need to add in the middle, and we'll reconvert that back to a character. So let's see if this works. Oh, not NX, it's NZ. Oh, 
Oh, and look at that. It looks like that's working as well. Now, one thing to note, there is one edge case. Uh, we might have all Zs, right? That's possible. Um, and if we did that, this kind of ruins it because of this middle operation here. So what we'll do is say, well, look, if um, n times 26, it equals k, then just return, you know, all Zs. And that should take care of that edge case. And there we go, that's much faster, right? And the logic is actually the same. It's just that we're using some sort of math to kind of calculate it. Um, I think it's fine to start with that very beginning. And if you can get to this solution, that's that's great too. Um, time complexity wise, uh, I guess this is constant, right? Because it wouldn't require us to do um, any O of Ns. It's just all these three equations here. So that's it. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.